so I'm back in business. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. It's Wednesday night. It is 10.20 in the evening. We just went out. I didn't want to have to cook dinner tonight because I'm making my pies. And if I have time, I'm probably going to start chopping my vegetables. So I'm making a pumpkin pie and I'm making an apple, pear and cranberry pie. All right. I got to get the ingredients together first and then I'll show you the whole process. Okay, so right now I'm making a basic pie dough. I'm doubling the portion because I'm making two pies, right? So I have, um, let me see, I have six cups of flour. I have two tablespoons of sugar. I have two teaspoons of salt. I'm going to put some cold water and right now I need to cut, let me read my recipe because I don't remember it by heart. I need to cut two sticks and two tablespoons worth of cold unsalted butter. So that's the part that's kind of like, ugh, nobody wants to do that. So basically you gotta cut your butter in thin slices. Because I'm using the food processor today, I could do it with my hands if I had nothing else to do. But, you know, bottom line is, I gotta cut them in pieces like this and I'm gonna cut them again. Alright, put them in that bowl right here. Butter is cut. This is uh, salt, flour and sugar and food processors ready gotta get my tea out of the way and cold water from the water fountain just gonna start adding my ingredients and just pulse them and make a dough I have the uh, dough whatever my thingy you call here and uh, once the dough is done I'm gonna wrap it I'm gonna cut it in half because I have two pies one is gonna be a little bit bigger because it's for this pie here that's gonna be the apple one and the other one need less dough because that's for the uh, pumpkin and um, they'll go in the fridge for 30 minutes while they're in the fridge and get cold I'll turn the oven on these are all my groceries I have to sort that out still and while that's done I start cutting apples and you know prep the rest processor. I'm just going to fold it a little bit more because I have still some pieces of um, butter that are not completely uh, broken but I don't want to do too much because the, uh, the more you work you do the harder it gets and the pieces of butter inside are actually pretty good because what's going to happen is that it's going to make it nice and fluffy right that's the kind of dough that you want the one that kind of falls apart um, as you eat it so here we go I got two um, portions worth of dough. I'm going to put that back on my board. There we go. And cut it in half. There we go. Alright. Put some wrap around it. And that goes in the fridge for a good 30 to 45 minutes. So I have everything clean and before I start cutting my um, apples, I have a pot of water here that's boiling and in it there's only maybe a half a cup of sugar. I have some uh, orange water, I have just a dash, a little bit of vanilla, a dash of bourbon and three cloves and I'm going to bring this to a boil. The reason why I'm doing this is because once I have my apples and my pears cut to pieces, I'm going to blanch them prior to putting them in the pie because otherwise they just take forever to cook and don't fight See, you're bothering the cat too look she's in the dog's crate <laughs> all right whatever um yeah so you blanch your apples and your pears first so that way the um they kind of like soften and they're gonna take on the uh, um flavor of the water just you know like let them boil for about four minutes not even two minutes okay and then you drain them and at that point you can put them inside your pie okay all right so let me start peeling all of this stuff so I have about eight apples and three pears to peel <music>
Now you see how the water is uh, slightly boiling, right? I'm just going to go ahead and dump my apples. It smells delicious. And my pears in there. I'm going to add a few cranberries. Not too much. Um, let's see, we're going to do this. And I'm just giving the pie a little bit of color. That's it. Nothing more. Um, stir it a little bit. And we're going to leave them there covered for a good five minutes. And then turn off the heat and just leave them in there for a few minutes. It's 11.20 already. I'm going to turn the oven on at 3.50. And that's to pre-bake the uh, uh, pie dough because you have to do that before you put your ingredients in it. But in the meantime, while this is heating up and those are kind of, you know, um, getting blanched, I'm going to make a creme pâtissière, which is kind of like a, uh, it's almost like a custard, like a vanilla custard to put at the bottom of my apple pie. All right, so I'll show you the ingredients and how to make it. All right, don't mind the mess over there, all right? Pretend that doesn't exist. All right, the ingredients for the creme pâtissière I have, uh, and I'm sorry, it's going to be in European measures. Uh, I don't know what they are in ounces. I just I grew up with the metric system. So I have the uh, half a liter, which is 500 um, milliliters of whole milk. It's a little bit over two cups, if you need to know. Two eggs. I have two yolks and about 50 grams worth of butter. I have 62 grams of flour and 75 grams of sugar. All right. Oh, and vanilla extract. All right, recipe for creme pâtissière. Let's start. I'm uh, putting my sugar at the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to break my two eggs into it. And I'm going to add the two yolks. Now, when you break the yolks, you got to make sure there's absolutely no white around it. Not even the little pot that's at the bottom. Okay, so that's that. And I'm going to whisk this to a cream. And by the way, while this is happening, on the other side over there, I'm uh, almost boiling my milk with a little bit of vanilla. Alright, so I have a little uh, flour in there. I'm putting a uh, um, rag or, you know, a towel underneath the bowl because I don't want it to move. Now that I have everything mixed, I'm going to add my boiling milk to the mix, just little by little. If you put it too fast, you go cook the eggs. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it nice and smooth. So you just add almost a drop at a time. I'm exaggerating, but you get the idea, right? I can't do it with my left hand. Hold on. Let's turn this way. All right? So, like I said, if you dump all the milk in there too fast, you're cooking your eggs and you end up with an omelet. Uh, a sweet omelet, no less. You don't want that. All right, it's done. I'm going to transfer this back into the pot and we're going to slightly boil it until it thickens to a cream. Now, the secret here is that as soon as it thickens, you just stop. You stir it a little bit. You keep it in there enough for it to cook, but you don't want to overcook it either. So you gotta keep stirring. And you'll see that eventually it's gonna thicken real fast. And again, you don't want to overcook it. All right, you see that? Let me give you a close up again. See the consistency here? It's almost, almost done. There we go. Beautiful. All right, and that's the part where I'm putting the butter. All right, so I've cut my butter in little pieces. I'm just gonna add it. Give it a good, nice, slow stir.
Look at this consistency. So this is the custard, basically, that's going to go at the bottom of my pie. And I'm going to try it right now to see what it tastes like. I'm hoping I put enough vanilla in it. Let's try it. Oh. <laughs> I could just spoon the whole thing out. It's delicious. All right, so listen. If you're not going to put that into your pie right away, use some granulated sugar and just put a layer of granulated sugar over it. No matter what, it's just going to make it sweeter. But what it does is that it stops it from creating like a skin. You know, like pudding makes a, that weird skin on the top, which is actually the best part of the pudding. But it's not the best part of creme pâtissière, I can tell you that. So this is going to stay on the side. It's not going to take long before I start using it. So I'm going to put this pot upside down over it just to keep it nice and moist and I'm probably gonna lick off the uh, whip right get the dough out of the um, fridge and prepare my pies it's time to get the fruit out of the pot it's been um, I pretty much turned it off and left them in there ah, 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 they're hot hold on let's see how soft they are perfect okay see you pre-cook them like this and then the cranberries are nice and plump right and it didn't really turn the water red which is great and again the reason why you do this is because your pie is going to burn and it's going to be the fruit is not going to be cooked enough so that way you know you have nicely cooked fruit and if you do it with that um you know flavoring of the water you don't have to put any syrup you don't have to put any sugar over it it's just perfect the way it is okay so i've cleaned the counter over here i'm getting the dough and we're going to start making pies first pie i'm making is the apple pie apple pear cranberry here's my dough it's nice and firm i'm going to put some flour over my freshly cleaned counter like that and then I'm going to put some on my roller as well and you don't have to knead it again okay seriously don't knead you uh, do too much because it becomes hard and roll it And whatever I get extra, I'll use to make a, a lattice, but I don't think I'm going to have a lot. Okay, so that's that. Part of the dish, putting a little bit of flour in it. So I really, it's not that I'm going to take the, uh, the pie out of the uh, uh, dish, but I don't want it to stick too much. Alright, turn it around, up, and bring it over. Give it a lot of slack, okay? A lot of slack. Okay, you cut at about, uh, uh, we're going to cut at about one inch from the edges all around. Too much here. Too much over there as well. You could have enough to make a lattice. Now, take this, fold it on itself. Don't fold it this way, fold it under. Perfect, you know. All right. Poke holes all the way at the bottom on the sides. Right. And this is going in the oven for a good uh, 15 minutes to pre-cook it. Alright, time to get the uh, pie crust out of the oven. I have a piece of, um, you know, I mean kitchen towel, but it's wet. And the reason why I'm putting it here is because I'm going to bring my pie 
right here it's already pre-cooked I guess and I gotta fill it up now and here we go see it's starting to recede a little bit here push it just a little bit once I put the fruits in it it won't do that anymore so we're gonna put the uh, custard in there You don't have to put all of the custard, you know. Just put, you know, enough to have at the bottom. Give a nice flavor. And I'll probably put a layer of it. And you know what? Let's do one more. Okay. I've drained all my fruits already, so I'm just going to go ahead. And they're not hot anymore because they stayed in the uh, sink. And I'm just going to try to layer them as much as I can and you want to do like you know pear, apple, a little bit of everything um, like this and then you just dump everything else on top see what I mean right now I just want to get like the bottom filled up with fruit Okay, put everything else back on top, like this, does it look delicious already or what, yum, okay, oh boy I got a lot of cleaning to do, alright, uh, let's figure this out, I want to put one here, and one here, move it a little bit, and that's three, nah, I don't have enough, hold on, let's move it this way, cut it here, move it over here, cut it there, move this one a little bit, and cut it over here, let's try to do a lattice. Right, over, under, over, doesn't matter if they're not complete, you know. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I'm just not very good at this kind of stuff. Alright, let me get a little bit of butter, uh, a little bit of milk, and a little bit, and one egg yolk. And I'm going to just, you know, cover the uh, uh, dough so that it goldens a little bit. It's just milk with a yolk, that's it. And just go over it now if I had. Uh, a brush, of course that would be better, but nobody's watching me except you guys. And I don't pretend to be a professional, so there you go. Alright, back in the oven. Uh, I don't know, 30 minutes maybe? Woof, still hot. Okay. Let me move the rack down and then I'll put it in the oven. Pie is in the oven. Uh, I'm at uh, 350. It's going to stay in there for a good, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes about. Meanwhile, let me close this. And in the meantime, I got to prepare my pumpkin pie. Uh, but I got to clean first because, you know, I can't work with this mess around me. It's already 1230. Um, the pumpkin pie needs about an hour. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be here until 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Ah, what you do for food and family. Amazing. All right, let me clean this up. The pumpkin pie, um, I just really have to make the cream for it. That's it. Because uh, I have all the ingredients. And it, it's a no-brainer. But I still have to roll the dough and all of that. So you know what? I'm going to do that now, actually. I'm going to roll the dough and pre-cook it a little bit. That way, I'm not wasting too much time. And I can just put it all the way at the bottom. Um, it won't matter. Just to pre-cook it a little bit. And uh, then I'll clean. Then I'll make the, uh, the cream base for the, uh, the pumpkin pie. Houston, we got a problem. My pie dough collapsed, so what I'm going to do is 
keep it tucked here on the side instead of having it kind of like overlap. So I will have an uneven pumpkin pie and that's it. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to redo it. It's almost, uh, it's already almost quarter to one. So I got to keep moving. Here are the ingredients. You need three whole eggs. You need uh, two times a third of a cup of brown sugar. You need one egg yolk. You need one can of uh, pumpkin puree. You need one cup of heavy cream. You need some cinnamon, ground, some ground cloves, some ground nutmeg. You need um, the equivalent of four tablespoons, no, four teaspoons of flour. And you need um, vanilla extract and you just mix pretty much everything in this bowl and whisk it into a cream. basically just dump the whole uh, cream inside your pie um, which is going to be tricky for me because like I said I messed up the dough on that one oh well let's just pour it in I'm probably gonna have too much maybe not let's see how that goes it doesn't rise so add a little bit just enough. Alright. Let's just go ahead and put the whole thing in. Alright. So now that's going to go in the oven. Um, it's supposed to bake for 15 minutes. The trick here when you um, um, want to see if your pie is um, done, you want to grab it in the oven and shake it a little bit the whole part on the outside should not move but you should have the part in the middle that's moving a little bit you see how this is moving okay only the part in the middle here should move so I'm gonna try to make some room for it on the rack I don't have a big oven I really wish I did but you know I'd like to have a double oven that'd be nice and I have two pies going alright so this one is done in about 10-15 minutes and then this one is just starting it's gotta be in there for 50 <laughs> It's 10 to 2 on Wednesday. Well, actually, it's first. It's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Nothing says <clears throat> thank you and I love you like baking pie until 2 o'clock in the morning. Here they are. Tell me what you think. We have an apple, pear, and cranberry custard pie. And we have a pumpkin pie. So now, like I said, the edges here are much harder than the middle. But that's just perfect the way it is right now. Yep. <clears throat> perfect oh it's delicious um, this came out nice and golden the whole crust here is baked to perfection yeah. see the clock it's 10 to 2 um, <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed I don't know what time I'm waking up we're not having Thanksgiving lunch we're probably gonna have a late lunch or an early dinner so I have time tomorrow you know I'll get up I'll start to, you know chopping the vegetables definitely put the turkey in the oven because that takes four hours and then um, you know make the dressing and everything else and the gravy so I'll see you again in my next video um, I hope you enjoyed it let me know if you like cooking videos because I've had requests for cooking videos so this was just about cooking I hope you enjoyed it I hope I gave you some uh, good tips and maybe you'll try my recipes if you have any questions comment down below and I'll see See you later. Bye!